Okay, Jenny, we are live on LinkedIn. Um, thank you for doing this. And um, thank you to those that are have joined us to watch us live at lunchtime today. Really appreciate it. Um, and thank you also if you are watching the recording on playback. Today, I am very excited to be joined by Dr. Jenny Lloyd, um, who is currently at Oxford Brookes University as a senior lecturer in marketing. Welcome, Jenny. Hi, Lou. It's lovely to see you and it's lovely to be able to join you. Thank you. Um, we met several years ago. I always try and think back to the guests that I've invited on and how we first met. And I think it was through through some marketing events in Bristol. But oh. we recently we recently got back in touch and realised that we lived in the same small Cotswolds town. Um, it was amazing. It was yeah. so it was, it was, and it was so lovely to catch up and uh, to see all the all the work that you've been doing in relation to social media over the recent oh. years. Yeah, thank you. So pre-COVID, we had real life coffees. Um, we did. During during COVID, we've we've been able to have some virtual coffees. Um, okay. Normally, you would be sat in the garden, but unfortunately, um, it's now British summer, isn't it? So we can't do that. Um, but the things that Jenny and I have been talking about um, during the, the weeks and the times that we meet up, I thought would make interesting conversation for people to listen into because it's all about learning. Um, Jenny as an academic and, and myself as more of a, a practical knowledge sharer, um, some of the work that I do. And just we've talked about how it has obviously changed over the past 100 plus days now we're on. I'm not counting anymore. Um, oh, no. But it's changed from a, an academic point of view. Um, it's changed from a business point of view. So um, I just love you to share with us, Jenny, from an academic teaching point of view. How's the, the lockdown virtual learning experience been for you? Well, it's been challenging. Um, you can't yes. deny that. Um, yeah. Almost overnight, we were we were midway through a, a teaching semester, and we yeah. had to pivot our face to face learning on fully onto to um, online. Um, yeah. And so, going back, looking at what we'd achieved so far, looking at the learning outcomes of, of our programs and our modules, um, looking at how we could we could make the, the 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 teaching and the learning experience for for the students still meaningful using yeah. a variety of tools of <laughs> learning curve having yeah. to, to to find the right technologies um mm -hmm. trying to guide the students through using the right technologies because both staff and students were on the same learning curve um, yeah. and we're looking again at assessments as well because of course <clears> if <throat> there were exams or um, if there were some sort of presentations, how we moved those online as well. Um, and it was it was a massive, massive yeah. effort. And I have to admit, I, I commend all of my, my, my colleagues um, yeah. and students because it, it, it needed flexibility on both parts. Um, yeah. But whilst it was, you know, universities are learning, learning organisations, um, mm. And so it really gave us all, I think, a chance to, to grow, develop, um, pick up new skills that I think yeah. are very valuable going forward. And I think it's interesting because we kind of think that we live in an online world. Mm. But actually, even though it changed overnight, it wasn't just about flicking a switch. It was a whole new experience. I was used to working from home. It's still different. Um, mm -hmm. I've delivered online training for a number of years. It's still different because because of the dynamics and and not just the learning, but the whole environment that everyone has found themselves in, because I guess you still had students living away from home um, and dealing with all of that side of things, as well as just, you know, the, oh, yeah. the learning. Yeah, well, I mean, the, 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 there's a few things that we, we really have to think about. I mean, yeah. we have a, at the university, we have an international cohort. So some mm. stay in the UK, but others went back home to their, their home countries. And we yeah. found some had, um, of course, they were working across different time zones. <laughs> yeah. Um, some had um, very mixed internet. There's been a yes. lot of media about um, some of school students perhaps not having access to the technologies or, or the, you know, not having their own tablets and things. Yeah. Sort of assume university students do, but actually not all of them do. And yeah. so the use of the, the tech we have it on site. So, you know, we, we had to think really constructively about what people had access to what time they would have access to it yeah. what they could then download and practically use um yeah. there's there was the difference between synchronous and asynchronous teaching it wasn't yeah. it wasn't just going on and 
talking to talking at people you know doing a, yeah. <laughs> a webinar broadcast we had yeah. to think about what what were the most effective methods of conveying that you know the the, the learning outcomes or, or achieving those learning outcomes um and so what yeah. was really interesting was being able to think about threshold concepts how you break them down how that you yeah. have to build in activities to to, yeah. to support them use of quizzes um yes. it was it was i mean <laughs> i really i really enjoyed it it was stressful yeah. <laughs> yeah. Worked yeah. Another, um and it was there is so much that we can take forward and i think it's given yeah. us the opportunity to think about when it comes to um the educational landscape you know with retailing with, yeah. with dealing with you know well how do you get the balance between clicks and bricks and i think yeah. universities now we've got to think about to do the same. Well, you know think about the same thing you know yeah. where is where are it, how do you what are the best ways of achieving the learning outcomes is it necessarily sitting in a big lecture theater and talking up people or is it smaller groups more interactive stuff you know yeah. time based problem based learning um yeah yeah i think i think yeah you know sometimes these things have forced us to do things um and and take risks and new challenges and there is positives to come out of that um one of my learnings has been you know working with people is sometimes Oh, just do it. Just deliver it online in front of a camera. It's exactly the same. And it's like, okay, <laughs> I haven't got to travel um, and stand in front of a room, but actually, I it's harder for a number of reasons. And and it kind of took me back to one of the uh, actually one of the LinkedIn learning courses I wrote a few years ago. That um, I was working with the managers and the team there because I was writing this course that face to face worked brilliantly. It was a workshop. It worked absolutely brilliantly but I couldn't replicate it as an online recorded course. Um, yeah. And I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why. And, and then I did, there was a, a turning point. It was because I had no nods or smiles or seeing people write notes or seeing people kind of take a, take a look at the ceiling and, and take things in. And so as a, you know, as a yeah. presenter, as someone leading the classroom, you feel right now in front of the camera, you know, we're, we're being good. We're nodding and smiling and, and helping each other. But there is that whole element is so much harder for delivery. And you've got to work a lot harder to engage people in the session as well, to keep them watching, to, to help them absorb the learning without being actually always able to interact with them. Absolutely. You know, it's being able to see whether people's eyes are <laughs> over is yeah, one, of, yeah. one of those um, <laughs> really. Yeah as of whether you're taking yeah. your with you and so when it comes to building courses i you know being able to put in you know opportunities for interaction I mean, yeah but it, it's fine if you are delivering things synchronously and, and what i mean by yeah. synchronously is you know you've got students on the other end yeah, yeah. Um, some of the big zoom lectures and things you might be able to ask students to post questions or, yeah. or they, you, you've got functions to put hands up but yeah when you're delivering asynchronously so that you've got students say for example in india or hong kong or, or <laughs> greece you know in athens who are accessing things at different times it's it's you don't have that momentum you don't have that oh yes there's that question and and let's yeah. let's do that further so yeah. um, you you do have to think much more much uh, you know much more carefully about how you how you make sure that people have achieved those learning outcomes where where how you judge whether or not you've you've actually delivered the content and how yeah. you actually engage them in a way that that's meaningful yeah. you know yeah. and and i think yeah um, and if you're you know live i actually find lives easier because mm. the camera's there i have to do it i know that there's hopefully some yeah. people watching but if there's a pre-record it's kind of like oh i can redo it um oh it's just me and the camera in in four walls so i find that i need to almost prepare myself in a very different way for recording as mm -hmm. i do as i do for live because again if there's no opportunity for them to interact with you you've got to almost raise the bar in a whole different way to to keep people engaged with it you do and it's quite it's quite funny because when i do mm -hmm. these things often they take so much longer because you're you you're so much more self-aware of what you're doing yeah um, and every um or ah or, <laughs> yeah. but um one of the things something that somebody said to me recently was that actually 
it's those little imperfections that that make it more real um yes. and not to forget them not to not to worry about them not to worry that you sort of stumble over the odd word or phrase or or have to go back over a pronunciation because i yes. i really to start off with i would i would take 3 hours to record a 20 minute presentation yeah um, and be exhausted at the end of it um yeah. and actually it was those it was those more human um interactions those more human forms of presentation that actually were better received and much more um much more um effective because it didn't feel like the students said they didn't feel like they were being talked at in the same yes. way and i guess maybe that's part of the the bigger situation is it in that you know mm. how people have been feeling during lockdown is that they actually needed the human connection that's as well true. you know they they needed that um, reassurance mm. that you know there was someone there and, and helping them along with it we also talked jenny about um it's obviously not just about lectures and presentations oh, yeah. virtual learning you know there's lots of other ways to it and we talked about um how to do one-to-ones and small groups as well oh yeah so, yeah I, your experiences I, have, have been positive i think oh they've been they've been yeah. brilliant um yeah. and it's something definitely you say when i when i take 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 things from this this is yeah. the use of online one-to-ones and online group small group um mm. experience as something that we're definitely going to use in the future you know yeah. at university what you have is an office hours and yeah. students may book up or they can drop in um, and often you'd sit there just waiting and students, <laughs> you know never going to turn up um, or you get an email going oh sorry I'm running late I'm stuck on a bus yeah. where um, there's some fantastic software you know you can meeting booking software I use Calendly um, yeah. And students get a link, you know, you, they book a time, they get a link, they get a yeah. reminder, we get a reminder. Yes. Um, and I've I've had supervisions with students and the, they've been standing in a queue at Sainsbury's or they've yeah. been on a laptop because they've been delayed. But you have that and and there is that, there's much more of a one-to-one -one connection. Um, yeah. with them where you, it, it, that is where a lot of the humanity where with that that human connection comes in, where you don't necessarily get it with the wider teaching. Yeah. So you actually do. You know, I, th I think it's important with this mm. virtual learning or real life learning that it's not just about the presentations or the webinars. It's about being able to move that mm. on by having the one to one sessions as well and exploring the ideas or or picking up on the questions. Absolutely, because you know when it comes to the whole educational experience, it ultimately it's about people. Yeah. Um, and it it's about those the, those that that human contact, the discussions, as you say, being able to see when people do understand, <laughs> yeah. don't understand and yeah uh, and raising questions and challenging them and mm. you know it, it's only when you 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 you're able to build those platforms in and that that's yeah. part of when we're putting together our you know now going forward. <laughs> yeah. Um you know trying to find ways of building those sort of platforms in to, to, to have those discussions not only with our with our students but also between students because yeah. it, it's the, the cohort wide interaction that is also so important students yeah. learn much from each other as they do from us which i guess is is the hard thing to replicate isn't it is the, the oh, yeah. for, for me it's the what i would call the side chats or the let's stand and mm. get a cup of coffee chats that's for me that that's the bit that I really miss is that um, so how are you getting on today or how was your journey here and you know the small conversations where you pick up perhaps the fears or the concerns or why someone's really come along to that event or you know actually there's something else going on in there and if you just give me a clue then I can help a bit more well that, that also helps with the pastoral stuff because you know yeah. they often say you can stand and you can tell by somebody's face by their body language um whether or not that you know whether or not they're happy um, yeah. in the universities you know you you often students don't want to ask questions they don't want to, to feel fully yeah. um and so you can you can pick it up so it is those mm. coffee coffee sessions yes. you know those yeah. it's standing outside of a lecture theater when you're waiting to go in if somebody's overrun yes, <laughs> yes. How are you? but it's also i mean from a I mean, there's there's that pastoral stuff, but it's also the opportunity to to say to students, you know, so, so how's it going? You know, yeah. what are your thoughts? How's this working for you? Is there anything yeah. you can do to improve it? Yeah. Um, and they students really appreciate you asking 
but being asked yeah if you stand up at the front of a lecture theater or at front of a seminar session and go so what do you think of this you know yeah how can <laughs> they'll all stand back and go oh god no you know not yeah do so it's it's having that sort of you know casual conversations in passing mm -hmm. conversations that are yeah. somehow again it would be useful to be able to find we're, we're looking at ways of building this in yeah. and, and more than just a an end of course feedback form form <laughs> yes feedback forms yes yeah so, so what do you think kind of going forward you know this obviously happened for a reason and overnight very quickly as you start to to prep for a new semester um oh. <laughs> yes um how what what kind of learnings are you going to take as you you develop new material rather than just kind of ah i've got this existing course that we're halfway through we need to adapt well i think it's really interesting i mean I've been a, quite an advocate of blended learning for a number of mm. years now. Yeah. Um, and what I've found is that there is, up till now, there's been a degree of reluctance, both often in terms of both, both from colleagues and also from students about engaging with a blended learning approach, because from, from colleagues, it, 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 it requires a bit more training, can be a bit more effort. Um, mm. It, it, and it is it can be quite daunting but everyone's been thrown into this yes so all of a sudden they are familiar with it so mm. being able to work moving forward i'm able to work with colleagues uh, much more effectively to to input some of the you know identify what they really enjoyed and yes. what's worked well and use yeah. bits that have worked well um and actually build those into the de delivery from from next year from yeah. students I think we, what we've got is an issue of when it comes to expectations. Students have, have sort of liked blended learning. They, they you know, yeah. you, ask, you ask students if they like lecture capture and they love it um, yeah. because they don't, you know, they go, well, if I, if I miss a lecture, it's there, but I would, would definitely want a lecture. Yeah. Um, but is that necessarily the best way of teaching? And hopefully what their student experience with mm -hmm. the last sort of, as you say, 100 days has been. Yeah is that they'll see that actually you know having the threshold concepts having the some basic stuff up front yeah um online and actually using the time the time face to face with their yes. tutors and their lecturers more productively and actually interrogating those concepts mm -hmm. work on projects dealing with problems um yeah whether that will be much more you know they, they will value that more but we do, I mean, we, we still have structural issues. There yes. is a temptation yeah. to revert back to the same timetabling systems. We've still got the same yes. steps, so the rooms are still the same. Um, of course. And workload models. So yeah. whether or not we are in a position to take the learning, you mm -hmm. know, universities as learning organisations, you'd think it would be a, a natural thing. <laughs> well, I think we're always learning. We're all always learning, aren't we? Yeah, and whether or not we can take that learning and adjust the workload models, the timetabling systems, the um, assessment structures and, uh, and program structures to, to, to take a more holistic, applied view. Um, well, yeah, I think we can, yeah, I think. you know, we'll, hopefully people have found it's been stressful, but hopefully we'll be able to take the positives, um, move forward and improve the experience for both staff and students. I, th I think sometimes when when change is enforced um, and you have to kind of look at changing models, I think we have all got something to learn from this, whether it's as mm. presenters or teachers or trainers or or more formal educators, but also from a learner's point of view, you know, what? It, how do I learn best? Do I learn best yes. by watching webinars? Do I learn best by reading books? Actually, who can, and for me, and that's part of the reason I love our coffee chats is who can I talk to about this? Who can I? turn to and say I'm working on this but I, I'm not quite sure who can I bounce this off so it's having those people whether it is your peers or your colleagues or your tutors or mm -hmm. or fellow students that can make the learning experience for whatever the needs are um, more fulfilling I think for everyone is probably the the word absolutely and it gives people the chance to take take charge of their own learning you know yeah. to drive it at the speed in the direction that they want yeah. Um, yeah. and they've got the time to go back over stuff, you know, stuff. Yeah. If you've, got, you've got videos if you've got some online content you can go back over it in your own time yeah. um, and you can you know you it, I think 
I think a, a blended learning approach really empowers people and empowers yeah. students. And it also engages them with the wider world because it gives us a chance to bring in people like yourself. Um, yeah. You know, we are always looking for um, marketing professionals to come in and talk about real world stuff. And it gives us a blended learning approach, really yeah. gives us the opportunity to draw on that expertise and give it real context. So, yeah. and that makes it, again, makes it so much better for students. Yeah. It makes them more employable as well. So it's, uh, it's always really fascinating guest lecturing because you'll you'll get feedback with, oh, yeah, our tutor told us about that. And you're like, well, it is true. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and we do actually do this in the real world. But just to kind of just to get that balance. But mm. I would say as a, as a practitioner, it's just really rewarding to kind of see the, the reactions and the questions and, and, and also to have that almost opportunity to reflect on this is what I do and why I do it. And, yeah. and it works. And I've got some great examples and, and people want to hear this stuff. So I'm, I'm a huge advocate of of always learning so yeah thank you for being one of my go-to people when I have have questions when I'm writing and working and <laughs> um, I told you 20 minutes was going to go really quickly Jenny and it, and it has it been, absolutely has great fun. so, great so fun. thank you so much for doing this and um, this was a series um of LinkedIn lives and it's my last one next week oh. we're doing it on Tuesday and um, I have started thinking about future series so um but a break for now but my next LinkedIn Live is on Tuesday next week and it's with my first boss um, who was my boss on my my boss my marketing manager she is my boss um, on my placement year over 20 years ago when I was at university so um, shows we, how we, placements are so uh, yes absolutely um, we, we are going to um, stick to talking marketing careers as, as our best we can um, but I'm really looking forward to that one as well previous copies of all the LinkedIn Lives are either on my profile or on YouTube. But again, thank you, Jenny, and thank you to everyone that's watched. It's been great to talk to you. You take thank care. You. And you.